The top 10 Nintendo Switch games of 2023 will surprise you with several titles you've never heard of or definitely didn't consider and never realized they reached such extreme heights. With Pikmin 4 dropping, Nintendo has an impressive onslaught of games in 2023, taking the seventh year of Nintendo Switch and making it somehow one of the best ever. Good morning Mario and good morning Switch fans, let's roll right through into the top 10 Switch games of 2023. Pikmin is right in the middle, but number one, I'm sure you know, is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. What more needs to be said, this game claimed a 96 on Metacritic and is the highest reviewed Nintendo Switch game of the year. It's really quite impressive how many Nintendo Switch exclusives are in the 90 range already for 2023, and there's a lot more Mario to come, so who knows how many they could have by the time we wrap December. Number two is Metroid Prime Remastered, another easy guess, and one of the best remastered games ever. I think in terms of like redoing something in a more limited fashion without a full-on remake, Metroid Prime takes the cake and it proves that the formula invented back on the GameCube still works insanely well on the Switch eons later. It makes us all so excited for Metroid Prime 4 because the graphics of Prime Remastered are already very impressive for Nintendo Switch and you can only imagine what they'll be able to do with Metroid Prime 4 and quite possibly another new Nintendo Switch. It also super helps that Metroid Prime Remastered was stealth dropped instantly and released at the low price of $39.99 for a remastered title on the Switch from Nintendo, that's one heck of a steal, and it well earns its 94 Metacritic and its number two spot. Now, number three is interesting and shares the same 94 score as Metroid Prime Remastered, but I bet you couldn't guess it even if I gave you 10 tries. Go on, go for it. No, it's none of those. Number three is Jack Jean, which is an Otome visual novel with rhythm elements. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this game is for me. It's about a girl who quits theater and then joins a very prestigious drama school and there's some singing and dancing that correlate to easy peasy rhythm segments. And frankly, despite getting such great reviews, uh, this one just does not look like it fits for me. But I'm happy to see that something completely unique and something I couldn't have possibly guessed did reach a 94. Now we move from 94 down to number four, which is a 90, and that's gonna be Persona 4 Golden. Yep, Persona 5 Royal is on Nintendo Switch, but it's Persona 4 Golden that released this year and earned a 90 Metacritic, bringing back what some may say is the best Persona. I think everyone was waiting to get 4 Golden on the Switch, even after 5 Royal, and now we're bringing even more Persona to the Switch, and it's pretty cool that while previously being very Sony-focused, Nintendo is gobbling up Atlas's games and making this like the best portable way to play these obscenely long games with amazing style and battles. These JRPGs are nothing to scoff at, and this one is much more my speed, although you do need to have a lot of time because it will be a slow go through 80 to 100 hours of Persona 4 Golden. Number five is where we find Pikmin 4, receiving an 88 on Metacritic, which is really awesome, and puts it in line with all the other Pikmins as a high 80s game that does not disappoint. Now, I've seen some people say that Pikmin 4 starts off slow, but most do praise that it eventually reaches challenging and manic pacing by the end of the adventure, packing nearly three times as much content as Pikmin 3, although making some strange steps backwards. True co-op is gone in favor of cursor-based co-op, and they removed the amazing multiplayer competitive mode from Pikmin 3. I freaking love that mode. I think it was the secret stealth best part of the last entry, and so it's odd that they have Dandori battles here, but they don't have Pikmin 3's competitive multiplayer. The bingo mode was brilliant, and they didn't need to do much except port it over to Pikmin 4 with new stages and new Pikmin. Oddly, they didn't. Otherwise, I think this game would have usurped either Persona 4 Golden or possibly even Jack Jean. Nonetheless, 88 is a great score, and sitting at number 5 just shows how strong the Nintendo Switch lineup is given the praise that Pikmin 4 is receiving and given the fun you're about to have now that the game is released. And number 6 will probably surprise you again. Coming in at an 87 Metacritic is Theatrhythm Final Bar Line, the rhythm music-based Final Fantasy game that chronicles 35 years of JRPG music. 
Now this one is a bit interesting because it does employ RPG mechanics as you can level up your party and help you out throughout the songs by, hey, this character's ability makes uh, you restore HP or this character's ability has you take less negative impact from missing a note. There's also co-op play where you can split the notes and then there's competitive play where you can almost cast like Tetris versus Puzzle Fighter uh, type attacks onto your opponent and make their music lines harder to stay on top of. Again, this isn't really my speed. Rhythm games, though, seem to really be occupying a large chunk of the top 10 for Nintendo Switch in 2023, and I think it is the size, scope, scale, and nostalgia of Theatrhythm Final Bar line, including its first appearance on home console, that helped elevate this one. The music is excellently done, and the little extra flourishes to the traditional rhythm-based gameplay do elevate this above some of its contemporaries. Number 7 is a very recent release, with Ghost Trick Phantom Detective getting the HD treatment on Nintendo Switch. This is a pretty short adventure, clocking in around 10 hours. It's $30 though on Switch, which is awesome, and it does feature very snazzy HD graphics, remastering an awesome mystery title where you can possess creepy objects to save others from dying. Yep, it's a puzzle game where you move between possessed objects and try to sort of rewrite history with a four minute rewind timer, allowing you to save super cool characters before they bite the dust. Ghost Trick was beloved as a cult classic back on DS, and it's pretty cool to see it on Switch, and I do love that it comes in with a half-off price point. I think it's the quirky nature of Ghost Trick that helps it earn its 86 on Metacritic. It's taking a very unique style of gameplay, possession, and talking to the dead, and helping that to revitalize a puzzle format that might typically be more mundane in a story-based game. This is a 2D title with a whole lot of dialogue, yet it manages to be super interesting and super atmospheric thanks to the interactivity of the world and just the awesome, clever Rube Goldberg machine type puzzle effects that you'll find from stage to stage. Next up at number eight, we have a 2011 game. Yep, it did get an 86 on Metacritic, but this is a PSP title Releasing in English for the first time with some HD visuals, yep, it is The Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure. I watched content on this game, and it's a JRPG that looks antiquated. And it must be quality because it did get such great reviews, but again, not really my speed. Though interesting to see such a wide range of variety in this year's top 10 so far. We've got games about gardens, we've got the greatest Zelda possibly ever with all sorts of creativity and creation, we've got Atome visual novels, we've got Ghost Trick, and now we have an old JRPG. That trend continues into number 9, Paranormasite, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, receiving an 85 on Metacritic and, yep, being a visual novel but with more gameplay. This one doesn't have rhythm in any games, instead has some very unique and kind of surreal ways of interacting with the world, sometimes requiring you to open up the settings menu or even provide outside knowledge to the characters to solve the mysteries and the curses of this game that is heavily inspired by the Famicom Detective Club series. I won't pretend to know a ton about Paranorma Sight, but it does seem like while the story telegraphs some of its twists, it is more video game than the traditional visual novel, and that is what helped it earn such high marks, including its unique implementation of how you solve puzzles and how you interact with the world. Wrapping things up at number 10 is an indie. Love to see an indie break this list, and that's Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals, 85 on Metacritic, rounding out our top 10. This one just dropped and has you seen the role of Riley and her friend as you navigate an island full of radio signal mystery. There's limited gameplay, although they have added some things from the first game, and I've seen very up and down, back and forth responses to whether or not you need Oxenfree 1 in your arsenal in order to enjoy Oxenfree 2. Some say, yeah, to get the most out of Oxenfree 2 and to really get what's going on and to understand the references, you need Oxenfree 1. And then some say it's standalone and provides its own interesting mystery. This game is very evocative oozing mystery and theme and atmosphere as you navigate around the world with 
tiny people and great little dialogue twists and turns so they're able to move through while still keeping the story going. I appreciate the pacing. I appreciate some of the loading screen upgrades they've made where dialogue continues through loading screens. Nice little touch. And for me, a game like Oxenfree 2 where you actually get to control the character and have more of a video game direct impact on what's happening in the world and in the story, that suits my taste better than visual novel. Although it's interesting to note that three of the top 10 Nintendo Switch games for 2023 are insanely story heavy. And you could argue that Persona 4 Golden is also super plot driven, though the RPG mechanics of that are fully fleshed out, fully featured, and very impressive in their own right. That's the top 10 of Nintendo Switch for 2023 so far. Let me know if you have any surprises on this list. Are there any games you're gonna check out that maybe you skipped before or haven't even heard of? And do you think titles like Super Mario RPG, Super Mario Wonder, or maybe that creepy new WarioWare game can invade this top 10 and usurp some of the already existing titles? What's clear though is that even in year seven, 2023 is a very strong year for Nintendo Switch. The review scores show and prove that and we're lucky to be living in this era. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. And until next time, Switch Force, out.